Weapons are at best the tools of bad omen. Loathed and avoided by those of the way. Lao Tzu, Tao Te Ching. In Taoist ritual, the first act is called calling the chi to order. To call the chi to order, one must first invoke the perfected warrior, Sen Wu. This is done by standing still, using the physicality of the method described above. It is a totally ready stance, able to instantaneously issue force in all directions. But Zen Wu is not just a physicality. He or it is a whole way of seeing the world. And he or it is in the first stage in the practice of Jin Dan or the Golden Elixir. Zen Wu is visualized in his armor with skin like the night sky drawing inward, chain and silk is woven into his hair. He is bare and feet and he is energetically on the edge of his seat, thinking of him as holding a sword in one hand without a sheath is the way one must visualize it. The tip of the blade is dragging on the ground. He is the embodiment of the Tai Chi Chuan concept of sun or letting go. He is utterly fearless, a god nothing to lose. Weakness to the twist. Taoist ritual stand. The Sword of Wisdom. Ever since the adepts handed on the secret of the sword, the true imperative has been upheld completely, truly, adamant. If someone asks me about looking for its origin, I say, it is not an ordinary iron. This lump of iron comes from receptive stillness. When you obtain it, something rises it up. Forging it in the glowing fire, the repeated efforts, it is refined and forged into steel. When students of the Tao know this secret, the spirit of light is intensely powerful and devils of darkness vanish. The subtle function of spiritual work is truly hard to measure. I now give an explanation for you. In telling you about it, I divulge the celestial mechanism. Setting to work when one yang comes back, first have the six yangs pump the furnace bellow. Then the six yins work the thong and the hammer. When the work of firing is complete, it produces the sword, the metal within. When it is first done, it flashes like lightning, as can be seen in the eyes of a true warrior. Brandish it horizontally, and a cold, clear breeze arises. Hold it upright, and the shining bright moon appears, auspicious light illuminates heaven and earth. Spirits and ghosts are distressed. It stops turbidity, brings out clarity, sweeps away weird defilements. It slays volatility, cuts down aggressiveness, destroys monsters, influences, drain away. Vitality, energy, spirit, all vanish with an opposition to the light of the sword. Entanglements are cut off. Ruination, well, it dies down. And the web of feelings is rent asunder. When the spiritual edge is aimed, mountains crumble. The demon kinds of mundane planes are all routed. This precious sword, first founded internally, fundamentally has no form. The name is set up because it has a spiritual effect. Learning the Tao and practicing reality depend on this sword. 
Without this sword, the Tao cannot be achieved. Opening up the vast darkness, distinguishing heaven and earth, dissolving obstructions, transmuting objects, all is included. You ask me to show you, to show you how. I will bring it out before you and ask. Do you understand it or not? The Book of Balance and Harmony, translated by Thomas Cleary, 1989, pages 115 to 117. The sword techniques are exact and the force is smooth. Practicing it, it is as a gentle breeze of drizzle, powerful as a thunderbolt, sensitive as a cat comes in my lap, a steadiness as in the bear walking on the ground. Stress the hardness or softness in evolving and moving. Pay attention to sword techniques. Change force by body. Wu Xing Jun, concise adaptation of Chen Tai Chi Sword. The sword is practiced with a meditative attitude of mind. As in the short and long forms, two methods are commonly used. One way is the concentration on the lower dantian, which is held there during the entire form. This method is practiced, for example, in the Chen Man Ching tradition. The other way relies on exercising the utmost of attention and is comparable to the Shi Kantaza in Zen Buddhist meditation. This technique is used, among others, by the Yang family and their followers, including Master Fun Zongwen. Both methods lead to the state of mind of non-thinking or empty mind. Naturally, it takes many years of practicing to become accomplished in either of these methods. Understandably, a meditative state of mind is difficult to achieve in the beginning, frequently, Thoughts will arise in the first years of training the form, as they do in sitting meditation. With growing relaxation and the ability to sink the energy, the state of non-thinking increases and prevails. This is an indication that the student has advanced on his or her way. Petra and Toyo Kabayashi, Classical Tai Chi Sword, Tuttle, 2003, page 20. Tai Chi sword is a weaponry form of the Tai Chi practice in which the sword is viewed as an extension of the body, not a separate part of Tai Chi practice. All Tai Chi weaponry forms preserve the same principles as Tai Chi Chuan, the hand form of Tai Chi. The practice of Tai Chi sword requires a person to follow the sword forms correctly to balance the sword with body well, and to apply power to the right point of force. It also requires the person to understand and display, as well as all meanings of offensive and defensive moves within each form. It is important to show accurately the shifting of body weight from empty insubstantial to solid substantial, and the variation of sword forms. The ultimate goal is to move the body and sword in unity with the right balance and rhythm. Cheng Zhao, PhD, Indiana State University, his book, The Tai Chi Sword, 32 Simplified Forms.